Hello YouTube, this is Goddard Radio Mosque here again with another beer review. Uh, now for this one I think I've got one that will be very interesting for you today. This is the Celtic Experience Silures beer which is a pale ale and it's the first ever beer I've found that's from Wales. I've, it's very difficult in Scotland to get English beers. There, there's a lot of real ale culture down in England and they really like all their craft beers but they're very very difficult to get a lot of the different ones in Scotland and that's simply because we've had such a big, uh, a big craft brewing boom ourselves and obviously it's even harder to get some of the Welsh stuff and this caught my eye simply for the name Celt. Uh, Wales obviously being one of the other Celtic countries you have Scotland, Ireland and obviously Northern Ireland in there as well, the Isle of Man uh, and you also have Cornwall in the very southwest corner of England and then you have Breton over in France as well so those are the Celtic nations and this just caught my eye simply because of that but this one should be quite interesting as I say my very first Welsh beer. Uh, I'll do, as is usual with my beer reviews I'll just take you through a bit of a history of the Celtic Experience Brewery if you are simply just interested in the tasting, feel free to fast forward just towards the last few minutes of the video and you will catch that particular segment. But I'll put the brewery, uh, the link to the brewery website in the description of the video so you can check that out as well. But um, this brewery are from Kerfilly, which is a small town just to the north of Cardiff in the very south of Wales. A very beautiful country apparently, I need to go and, and uh, visit it myself sometime. But the brewery uh, is just over 10 years old. They were founded by Tom Newman who apparently was an avid home brewer but is obviously like many of the uh, the craft brewers these days has turned professional but his brewing apparently started in his dad's garage and at this point he was using the name Newman's Brewery but apparently he learned a lot of his brewing techniques through trial and error so it must have been quite a painstaking process for him but he was able to buy up brewing equipment from uh, the Smiles Brewery in Bristol which sadly shut down and uh, soon after this he registered the name the Celtic Experience and uh, then they went on to open up their brewery that they're currently in today in Kerfilly just to the north of Cardiff but but Tom decided that he would focus on the Celt brand and he allowed, he allowed the Newman's brand basically to fade away into the night as he put it. But he then launched uh, a couple of beers, Celt Golden, uh, Bronze and then Bledlin which were originally organic brewed beers and in 2010 uh, the to Tom began to experiment with a lot of various different malts and hops and he dropped this organic mantra from, uh, from his brewing process and then the brewery has grown quite a lot ever since then and grown very strongly. And in 2012 they introduced the Shapeshifter range of collaboration collaboration beers. Now the brewery have apparently collaborated with uh, Boxing Cat Brewery from Shanghai, Brasserie Saint Germain in France and they've also uh, collaborated with a certain beer blogger who you might recognise from YouTube, Simon Martin, Mr Craft Ale or Craft Beer, I can't remember quite exactly what his channel's called uh, but he's a very very good beer reviewer, definitely check out his, uh, his beer reviews and they've also collaborated with beer writer Melissa Cole as well but in 2013 they also launched their Celt Ogham range which is, I think is quite obviously influenced by the high ABV percent Belgian beers that you get and these beers that they produce, there's three of them in the range and they vary between 8.5% and 10.5% ABV and these were instantly successful when they launched them but the brewery are continuing to expand and improve uh, and they're aided by the this big boom that I always talk about with craft brewing recently. Craft beer is getting very very popular the world throughout and uh, but they've also got the help of a guy called Gavin Davidson who is a very, a very gifted uh, financial and investor and he's helping to fund the company as well. But as a, in addition to this beer, the brewery produced several other ones. They have three different ranges. There's the Celt Ogham range which I mentioned earlier is the one is the high ABV range. There's the Willow which is an IPA. There's the Oak which is a Belgian triple and there's the Ash which is an Imperial Porter. I'll need to try these. I really like high percentage beers and that's not just because I'm Scottish and uh, generic, genetically alcoholic. Uh, but there's the Shapeshifter series which is the one I mentioned is full of the collaboration brews. Uh, there's Saint Ceciliac, which is an American wheat ale, Divine Yule Saison, which is a pumpkin saison, uh, Apparition IPA, which is obviously an IPA, Scarred Belgian, which is a Belgian triple style, Papadam Cyclops, which is a spice IPA, Seven Flowers, which is an unfiltered double IPA, that one sounds quite interesting, Barbarian's uh, Beverage which is a black chilli IPA, that could potentially be quite interesting as well, there's Scrum Pox which is a highly bittered beer that they say was designed for rugby players, Wales incidentally has a very very uh, good rugby team, they win the Six Nations tournament quite a lot, uh, there is also the Danish Monster which is an IPA, 613 Anis which is a red beer de gare, obviously a French style of beer, the Centennial Drift which is a rye IPA, I need to still try that particular style 
style of beer and they also have the Cat Scratched Kelt which is the one that was from the Chinese collaboration brewery that they have in Shanghai but um, they also this beer is one of the core range which also includes the Kelt Lager, the Native Storm, Dark Age, Iron Age, Bronze Age, Golden Age, Kelt Bledelin and Laten. So I'll put the brewery website in the description so you can have a little read about all of these different beers that I've just listed for you if you are, inter if you are interested in that. It's quite a nice website design they have actually so definitely check that out and it's obviously you can read up on these different beers and decide what you'd like for yourself. But um, anyway let's get on with the tasting of this beer. This one is a 4.6% pale ale. Apparently it's hopped with uh, sweet malts and, trop and uh, tropical fruits. It's named after the Celtic tribe from the area that is today southern Wales and apparently the Silers tribe put up a very brave fight against the uh, the Roman invasion that happened many many years ago, obviously in uh, the southern part of Wales. I don't, I don't I can't remember if Wales was conquered by the Romans. I know that Scotland was only conquered so far up to the sort of uh, River Forth and things like that, but I can't remember what happened to Wales exactly with uh, with the Roman conquest in Britain. But anyway, let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting. I'll let you just have a little look at the uh, the bottle art on this one. Now, as you can see, it's quite it's quite a simple design. It works really well. There's actually a bit of a product description on the back of this one, so I'll just read that out for you. Uh, this is a powerful and deep-bodied pale ale with a spectrum of fruit aromas. This robust beer is brewed using the balance of flavour malts and Pacific and Atlantic hops, resulting in a massive beer with a perfect profile of bitterness, sweet vanilla maltiness, and a blend of citrus, grapefruit, passion fruit, and mango on the finish. The beer is named after a powerful and warlike tribe of ancient Britain, occupying approximately the county of Monmouthshire and Breconshire. The Silers made a fierce resistance to the Roman conquest about AD 48 and it remains unclear whether they were actually militarily defeated or simply agreed to come to terms with the Romans. The name Brassis Kurmi, malted beer, traces back to the ancient Celtic language or Proto-Celtic, an age where the Celts were of some of the first beer producers in Europe. And as it says on the back here, it's brewed in Kerfilly in, Kerfilly in Wales. You can see just on the back there, there's a little European Union symbol just there. I'm not sure if this is... It, if this is just talking about the agriculture where they've got the hops, the uh, hops and stuff from, it's not a protected uh, trademark as was the case with the Budweiser Budvar beer that I reviewed for you. But as you can see, anyway, this is quite a, it's quite a plain design on the bottle, but it works really nicely, and it's got an unusual top on it. It has a kind of waxy sort of top on it there. Uh, there's the bottle cap for those of you who are interested in that. I like to keep my bottle caps, of course. But let's get this guy open and uh, get on with the tasting here. I just need to watch with this one because it looks like it might be a bit weird to open. There we are. Let's just try and snap this off. This is going crazy. Oh dear. That's the second beer to explode in my face. So there we are. Let's just get this guy open and get him poured. As you might remember, my last beer that exploded in my face was my Ethiopian beer, but obviously this one hasn't travelled very well either. So let's just get this guy out and uh, we'll get on, continue with the review without any more explosions, hopefully. As you can see, there's quite a bit of head going to come on this one. It's a really nice, attractive looking beer. The little taste that I got there just when I was taking the top off the bottle was quite bitter, I have to say, which is what I would expect from this beer, having read about it. But anyway, as you can see, there's a massive head on there. I'm not sure if that's simply just because of the, the little explosion that we had. Uh, but as you can see, it's a very, very nice, beautiful sort of hazy golden colour there. There's some carbonation visible throughout it. Nice big sort of three finger head there. Really, really frothy. There are some bigger bubbles in there as well. In terms of the aroma, really getting a lot of citrus out of this one sweet citrusy hops on the nose but you can pick up the tropical fruits in there as well I am picking up the grapefruit they said that there was passion fruit in there as well and mango I would definitely I, I can't pick out the the individual fruits but I would definitely believe them that that's in there very sort of tropically fruit smell to this one as well let's just see if I can get the rest of this into the bot into the tankard there we are that's it all out now but yeah really really citrusy on the citrusy hops on the nose the tropical fruits are in there as well. I am getting the sort of piney elements to it as well, but a very, very hoppy beer on the nose. Smells, it smells really, really nice. Really, really beautiful smelling beer. So let's get on with the tasting of this one. Try and just get rid of some of the head on this first. Yeah, this is a very, very bitter beer.
yeah, as I say, it's very, very bitter. As uh, as I say, it's the bitterness is really, really strong in this one. You are getting the grapefruit notes in the backgrounds, but it's extremely hoppy, this one. You're picking up the grapefruits and the mangoes in the background, but the first thing that is coming to you is that hot bitterness, and that's present throughout it. The fruity notes are just kind of in the background, really. But yeah, really, really big bitterness. There's a malty feel in the middle a little bit, the aftertaste is kind of malty and there's some kind of vanilla in that as well. Where you can detect the pininess in that aftertaste as well and kind of throughout when you take it in. In terms of the mouth, the carbonation is not very prominent in it at all, I would say. It's quite, um, it's a very sort of mid-bodied beer. It's not very heavy at all, I would say, but the main feel you're getting off it is it's a very very bitter beer there is an element of dryness to it as well mm. but yeah it tastes really nice for this one I would say you really have to be into your um, into your bitter beers to really really get what this one's going for this is probably the most bitter beer I've actually tasted but it's, I do quite like it it's a style I would have to get more used to, and this one I would recommend that um, this is more of a tasting beer rather than a drinking beer. Maybe with this brewery it would have been better for me to start with one of the other ones, but this was the one I found. But yeah, I can appreciate this beer. This is a really, really nice one, and it's a very, you can tell from the taste of it, it's very, very well crafted, and there's a lot of thought gone into the brewing process of this one, but it's a very, very bitter flavour. You are getting the sort of tropical fruit notes in the background. There is just a little element of citrus in there and in the aftertaste you're getting the vanilla and the piney notes but it's a really really nice beer as I say this is a style I would probably have to get a bit more used to but it's a really really nice beer and you can tell that it's crafted very well I'd be definitely I would definitely like to try some more of their stuff but I'm, I'm really impressed with this brewery but yeah this Definitely a style I need to get a bit more used to. I'm not quite used to beers that are quite this bitter, but a lot of people are and really like this particular style. But anyway, I hope this uh, beer review has been quite informative for you. As I say, this is a very, very nice brewery by, this, by the looks of it, judging by this beer so far. It's a style I have to get a bit more used to. Very, very bitter beer, some nice grapefruit notes in there, and the vanilla flavours and the piney notes on the aftertaste. If you're into that sort of thing, definitely give it a go. I would say this beer is more of a... A beer that you try, uh, it's, it's not a sessionable beer this one, this is one you try uh, for enjoying the style and just for enjoyment really. And um, There are probably beers in their range that are a bit more uh, kind of sessionable if you like. They've Obviously they've got a lager and they've got some pale ale, other pale ales and stuff like that so those are probably worth trying. Hopefully I can get a hold of them so if there are people watching from Wales who, know, uh, who, who perhaps know in Scotland where they supply these beers to please let me know in the comment section. As is usual please let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this particular beer. I have to say with my uh, my first Welsh beer review, I wasn't expecting something quite so bitter, but I have to say I've quite enjoyed this one so far. As I say, a style I have to get more used to, but hopefully this beer review has been informative for you. I'll be back with other ones in the coming days, so please, if you haven't considered already, please consider subscribing to the channel, and please like, subscribe, share, comment, all the usual YouTube stuff, but I hope it's been informative. You've been watching Goddard Radio Moscow, and I will catch you soon. Cheers.